Six and a half ways that Apple Silicon Max can really stand out from the crowd. This is Living on iPad with David Eden Sangwell. Apple announced at WWDC 2020 that by the end of this year, that the first Apple Silicon Macs will be arriving for consumers to buy. But how can Apple make these Apple Silicon Macs really stand out from their previous Intel iterations? We're going to look at that in this video. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so everything just works for you. If you want the latest Apple news, rumours and leaks every day at 12 UTC, click the like button, subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss a thing. Number one, smashing Intel on performance. Apple's A series chips have already been performing incredibly well and based on Luke Miani's extrapolations from previous performance gains, it looks like the A14X chip is going to be rivaling i9 Intel processors. That's just based on the A series architecture that we've already seen in iPad pads and based on almost no cooling. All of the cooling on these is passive. As soon as Apple gets a much bigger chassis to work with, like a MacBook Pro, like an iMac, like a Mac Pro, the performance on these could be absolutely incredible. Also, bear in mind once they're into a desktop PC, you're not even having to worry about power consumption in terms of battery life. All you have to do is get that heat away from the processors, and Apple's processors run incredibly cool for the power that they put out. Based on how much power Apple's been able to get out of the iPad processors, I think Apple Silicon in Max is going to be absolutely insane. Number two, beating Intel on battery life. The biggest problem that Intel has had over the previous few years is that they've not been able to shrink their dies down in the way that they expected, so the only way they've been able to add more power is by just bolting more cores and more cores and more cores. That's why we're seeing 28 core Mac Pros, we're seeing 10 cores routinely in the iMacs, but all of this needs more power and creates more heat. That's why the MacBook Pros have had so many issues with cooling in the past. However, with Apple Silicon, they're much more optimized for the software that we're using, they run much cooler, they use much less wattage, so battery life is expected on the first MacBook that comes out using Apple Silicon to be between 15 and 20 hours. That will make a huge difference for any creatives working on the go. Number three, natively running iPad and iPhone apps. It's been pointed out even at Apple's own WWDC keynote that the Apple Silicon Macs are going to be capable right out of the gate of running iPad apps and iPhone apps unmodified on their systems. This is a huge win for Apple because right now the Mac App Store is a wasteland compared to iOS. iOS has millions of apps out there that will do everything from gaming to photo editing to you name it, there is an app for it. As soon as the Apple Silicon Macs arrive, they will have access to that catalog of apps. As long as the developers don't decide to specifically disable the apps for Apple Silicon Macs, they will automatically run. That's just going to open up a huge software library to Macs that has never been available before. Number four, bringing multi-touch and Apple Pencil support to the Mac. Now this is unconfirmed, however, from Big Sur and the way that the operating system looks, everything has been spaced out more than it was with Mac OS X. Everything has got kind of more touch-friendly controls. It looks like the control center is designed for touch on the sliders. Now, this could purely be for uniformity and fitting in better with the iOS ecosystem that we have already, because more people are familiar with iOS than they are with Mac OS. That's just because iPhones have become so ubiquitous. All of that said, it would be simple for Apple to add touch support to the Mac, especially with all of these iPhone and iPad apps moving straight over, touch support would work wonderfully well. And as soon as you add in Apple Pencil support, as well as I've mentioned in some previous videos, especially about our iMac, which I can imagine moving down like a, a drawing board easel, Apple Pencil support would be fabulous on there. It wouldn't be the primary input just like with the iPad. The iPad is touch first, the Macs would be keyboard and trackpad first, but they would have the option to use either. Number five, Face ID. It's already been found in the Mac OS beta software that Face ID will be coming to Macs eventually. We don't know how soon that will be. We don't know if it will be first generation, second generation, or something that they're just testing for way down the line. But being able to Face ID into your Mac, having your Mac recognize you personally, biometrically log you into the right user account would be super useful, especially for, let's, let's say, education with iMacs sitting in classrooms. As soon as the student sits down, it recognizes who's sitting there, loads their preferences, loads their files and only their files. And even for exams being taken, Face ID would be able to actively verify that the right person is sitting in front of that computer taking the exam. 
But for people at home using a family Mac, just, you know, using their partner's laptop, maybe your preferences from your own computer could just be loaded straight into that one over your local network. So all of the Macs in your home just become Macs instead of dad's Mac, mum's Mac, the kids' Macs. Number six cellular connectivity. This is something that the iPads have had forever, but we've never had a cellular connected Mac. And I know there are some laptops out there that you can do it with, but now with Apple moving over to eSIMs in things like the Apple Watch series, and also uh, having the option for an additional eSIM in some of their iPhone models, surely this is the time when we can have a Mac that you can literally open up anywhere and connect to the internet without any hassle. I think this would be a massive win. It'd also open up the possibility for telephone companies, for mobile phone companies, cell phone companies to start selling Macs on a monthly plan in the same way that they do with iPads right now. Not only would you open up a huge amount of productivity possibilities for the Mac, but you would also open up a huge market of people that don't have the money to buy a Mac outright, but would love to have one on a subscription the same way that they do with their mobile phones. Now for me, I personally use a personal hotspot on my phone because I have a really good day to deal with my carrier. However, I think that the pure convenience, especially for workforces, um, of being able to take a single laptop out on the road with them, be able to connect from anywhere, not have to worry about taking a charger even with you because of that, remember that 15 to 20 hour battery life that we're talking about? I think that Mac notebooks could well be coming with cellular chips in the very near future. 6.5, and our bonus feature. Now this is completely unconfirmed and probably not something that Apple will do, but I would love to see the colors that are being used in the iPhone 11 and presumably the iPhone 12 lines, those bright vivid colors coming to the MacBook when it becomes an Apple Silicon Mac. I would really love to see some personality come back to the Macs. Remember the old rainbow logo? Let's take those colors, anodize the aluminium so that we've got really vibrant colors finally. Mac users tend to be creatives. They tend to be YouTubers and graphics professionals and marketing people. As well as everyone else, Macs are for everyone now, but they've traditionally always had that kind of heritage of being for creatives. Now, whether that's the case today or not, I think, especially for students as well, going back to university with a low price Mac that could have a bit more color, a bit more personality, I think that would be a really good way to differentiate the new Macs from the old. Intel has got a perception of being boring. AMD has now kind of passed Intel in the gaming space and in, in the gaming side of things. So it would be really good to see Apple bring that splash of color back to the Mac. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts on what Apple Silicon should do to really stand out from the crowd and what Apple can do to make a big splash with Apple Silicon. Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to get a shout out in one of our Apple Daily news shows, all you need to do is subscribe, ring that bell, and let me know that you did so in the comments, and I will give you a shout out in your very next video. Thanks so much for watching. I've been David for Living on iPad.